Thanks for joining us here today at uh, Insurance Cinematics USA. Uh, I'm with uh, Greg Ross from GM and Neil Spector from Verisk. Uh, pleasure to have you here. Um, I just want to actually open um, with uh, you, Greg, if you don't mind. Sure. If you could just briefly uh, introduce yourself and uh, what your role is with EM, GM and sure. how that affects the connected car and uh, insurance cinematics business. Sure. Uh, my name is Greg Ross. I'm responsible for business development and partnerships at General Motors in our connected vehicle group. Um, GM's made an investment in having built-in connections in all of our cars, and uh, we see that as an opportunity to work with partners that are interested in the connected car. So that's my role. It's, uh, it means I get to interact with a whole lot of different industries, but uh, for this purpose, we're here talking to the insurance industry about how we can use connected cars to create value for our customers. Hi, I'm uh, Neil Spector with Verisk. Uh, Verisk Analytics is a data and analytics company that serves multiple verticals, but our largest vertical is property casualty insurance. I'm responsible for the underwriting division and our telematics strategy, and uh, excited to be here today. Um, so you guys have actually made a, a joint announcement this morning. Um, maybe if you could just tell us a little bit about uh, what your presentation was on earlier today. Sure. So um, we presented basically the concept of creating a data exchange, the Veris Telematics Data Exchange, which is a place where connected car data with consenting consumers can be accessed by insurers for use in UBI programs. And so um, the first partnership that we have and the first data that we're going to have in the exchange is our partnership with GM OnStar. Uh, we're launching it in the middle of next year. And uh, this will be an opportunity for consumers who are um, in safe driver programs uh, you know, with, with GM OnStar to have their safe driving data with their consent collected and then be able to leverage that when they buy insurance in order to be able to get discounts from insurance companies as long as they consent into those UBI programs. We're very excited about the partnership. Yeah, and it's it's great for us and for our customers. We um, we were excited to work with Verisk. We, we think they had the same vision we did that um, it should be possible for our customers to get their data in front of their preferred insurer and it should be possible for insurers to get at this data easily and help customers main, maintain control of the data. So what we love about this is customers create the data, it's theirs, they get feedback on how they're driving and they maintain control of it um, and then if they choose to share it with an insurance provider uh, they can do that and, uh, and get uh, whatever rewards they have for safe driving. So we think it's great for our customers. Uh, we're glad to be a part of it and glad to help uh uh, you know, lend our, our support to this effort. Uh, well, we've got a, a busy couple of days here and a, a fantastic uh, lineup of speakers, which obviously you guys are helping us out with. Um, I was just going to ask, uh, is there any topics or speakers that you guys uh, are actually interested to hear about or to see from, uh, within two days? Uh, well, this is a new one for me. I, uh, I've not been to this venue before, uh, so learning more about the insurance industry is, is good for, for me, learning about usage-based insurance and the trends there. I've been struck by how much work is going on and how much innovation is going on, not just with, uh, with the automotive manufacturers, but also with smartphone applications and other devices and different business models are being developed, so it's an exciting opportunity for me. Yeah, I think from our perspective, this is an opportunity for us to see what other data is out there that might be of interest to insurance companies, whether it be other OEMs or uh, TSPs or Internet of Things providers. So we're certainly interested to see what data is out there and is of interest to insurance companies so that we can be a, a, an opportunity to help distribute that uh, to insurers. I think the other thing is always good to come to these programs and learn about what our customers are doing. So I, I love going to the insurer presentations and hearing about how they're deploying you know, UBI with their customers. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> there, there have been some big developments for the connected car that have actually come across verticals and now affecting the insurance industry. Um, let's start with the autonomous car. Uh, there are big investments from automakers, uh, tier ones, in developing this technology. How how do you see um, how do you see this technology actually affecting the insurance industry and and ins you know usage based insurance providers? I may not be the best one to comment on how it directly affects the insurance industry. I can I can talk about the trend though. We General Motors is making a lot of investments in in autonomous, uh, taking steps towards full autonomy. Uh, starts with a connected car and then building on that several features that you're starting to see on the road today uh, with adaptive crews and and other safety technologies and leading up to what we call super cruise that will launch next year. So 
We are making the investments, but our view on it is it's ways to make the driving tasks safer uh, and more convenient, um, which is always a good goal and the right goal to pursue. Um, I really, not the best one to talk about what effect it then has on the insurance uh, providers, but our hope is to make cars safer and safer. Yeah, and I, w I would just add that I think uh, that's an evolution, you know, to get to autonomous vehicles, and I think the evolution will come through the uh, enhancement of safety systems in the vehicle and they poten potentially are going to generate data that will be available for the next generation of UBI. So I think, um, you know, as we partner with, with GM and OnStar and the insurance industry, we'll find out these new safety v uh, features, uh, when they are in the car, they potentially make the driver safer and therefore could be reflected in, you know, discounts for consumers. And so it'll be exciting to see those technologies translate into the UBI models that the insurance industry is using today. Another, another big topic. Um, is around the Internet of Things, uh, a connected world where data is being um, passed around, you know, huge amounts of data. Um, this obviously has impact for the connected car and the service you provide there sure. from the automaker and obviously what we can do in, uh, in terms of insurance uh, based, sorry, usage based insurance. Um, again, I was just going to ask Greg, I suppose, how, how do you think we need to sort of adapt to incorporate the Internet of Things and how we go about our business in the future? Well, yeah, we've been involved in the Internet of Things since before it had a name. I mean, uh, we've been doing OnStar for 20 years uh, approximately now, and the notion of having the machine connected to the network for for purposes that allow you to make the car safer and, and more convenient is, has been an idea that we've been pursuing for a long time. So we think opportunities to continue with those values. Um, I think what's new now is because there's a lot more players interested, there's a lot more third parties interested in using the data. I think there's opportunities for new business models, creation of new value for our customers uh, based on that built-in connection. Um, so we're, we're excited about the possibilities and, and we think the kinds of work that you're hearing about here today in the insurance industry is just a really good example of that and we think you'll see others as you see more connected cars on the road. Yeah, I think the, um, the Internet of Things is going to be interesting for insurance. I mean, auto has led the way with UBI and telematics, and I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it's relatively there, and it will evolve and get even better. I think there's other lines of business like the connected home and other lines in insurance that there's a lot of implications for Internet of Things data. And uh, Verisk is very uh, active in research uh, with the insurance industry to determine for other lines of business, you know, what, what types of data coming out of the Internet of Things can be valuable, uh, both from a consumer perspective and helping to uh, control and, and manage insurance rates, and also from an insurer perspective. Because, you know, insurers um, historically have been protected against um, loss but I think insurance companies want to get into helping their consumers prevent loss and the Internet of Things data can potentially help that right safety systems in cars sensors water sensors and homes that shut off water when there's a, a broken pipe so I think the insurance industry is going to evolve towards using that data to provide more of a service to their customers um, the, the connected cars also made uh, big leaps in uh, enabling the uh, the these new uh, mobility services, so car sharing, e-hailing, uh, lift sharing, uh, all these things, and they seem to be getting more and more popular. How do we, how do we then, as a, a business, sort of adapt to incorporate this um, a sort of a trend of moving away from a traditional sense of car ownership? Um, I can only comment that we agree that there's a pretty big trend here. Uh, General Motors is, is invested in a creation of a team that's focused exclusively on this this trend towards greater urbanization, more sharing, that sort of thing. To look at how our products need to adapt and also how our business models need to adapt to to meet those trends. So we think it's a significant trend. We think it's real. Uh, we think there's real changes going on. Um, how it affects the insurance industry, I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure it's. Uh, just another model that challenges how to measure the performance of the vehicle and, and the, the risks associated with that. Yeah, I, I would say the connected car offers an opportunity to collect a lot of really good data, right? Because the, the, we, we know what's going on in the car. The um, ride sharing and some of the new mo mobility, um, you know, there, there's issues there and there's opportunities for the insurance industry, right? So you have, you have Uber and Lyft and those types of services. And I think have, making sure that those people have insurance coverage, whether they're you know, taking somebody or they're en route. Those are issues that 
um, are being worked out between those companies and the insurance industry, but having good access to data will always help that. And so I think the connected car will enable um, insurance to be offered you know, in these new, new type of ways because the data will be available to manage the risk. Um, I was, I was going to say that uh, as we have a, an automaker sat here, I mean, in, in the past, uh, the perception from insurance carriers and services in this space have been that uh, the automakers have been very sort of standoffish in terms of the, the data that's on the, in the vehicle. Because um, the insurers are obviously uh, desperate to get hold of that data, that rich quality data. We seem to have passed a point now whereby the automakers are actually more open to talking to service providers, uh, more open to sharing data. Um, obviously, now with the relationship with Verisk, we've actually turned a corner, it seems. Um, is, is this something you see as continuing? Do you see the, the, uh, the automakers moving into the insurance industry and being more involved? Well, I expect the others to follow. That'll be up to them. Um, but I think it's the right thing to do. And I think the breakthrough has been um, to think about it differently. It's it's not the manufacturer's data, in our view. It's the customer's data. And, uh, and we need to act as a custodian for it. But I think the way that we've broken through this is to think about making sure we're providing the customer real value with a, with a service that gives them feedback on their driving and separate that from sharing the data with the insurance company. So get, let the customer have the data, let them understand how they're performing, give them feedback, and give them control over whether to share that data with the insurance company. So what I like about the arrangement that we've, we've struck with Verisk, and, and Neil talked about this earlier today, is keeping that decision very clearly separated. Let the customer create their data and, and put it in a place where they can make it usable, use, usable when they want to. Uh, but if they don't want to, let them continue to have the feedback that they value separately from sharing that data with an insurance company. And I think in the end, everybody's better off in that um, drivers will get feedback that helps them drive more safely, but they can also, uh, at their discretion, share the data when they want to and, and, uh, and provide it to the insurance company as part of an insurance relationship. Yeah, I would just add, I mean, and I, you know, my hat's off to, to GM Monster. I think they've led in this area and they're actually changing the view in the market by um, the way they're viewing their customers and their service uh, from an insurance perspective. And I think, um, you know, that will be a, a leader for others to, to model going forward. I think it's interesting that, you know, when you buy a car, you have to have it insured. You can't have a car and not have insurance. Obviously, you can't have insurance without having a car. So they're both very necessary. And um, I think that this is a, a good common ground for auto manufacturers to offer really good service to their customer around, you know, if you drive more safely, there's a benefit that you can gain. And it's completely up to you whether you want to opt in, but this is the value of being a safe driver. And so I think it allows them to provide that value to their customer. At the same time, as an insurer, you get this wonderful opportunity when somebody comes to you and you can use their driving history if they consent to be able to give them a better price because traditionally insurance, safe drivers are overpriced. That's just a fact. It's the way the insurance, and it's just the traditional data sets that insurers have used. There's no way to get down and say, how, how do we drive compared to each other? If we look identical and we drive the same and we drive the same car, but I'm a safer driver, how do you know? And UBI is the only way to do that. And so I think this really puts the, the power to the consumer, but it enables both the manufacturer and the insurer um, to offer a better solution. And then just finally, uh, we've got you guys for the both two days. Fantastic, and, and you know, again, glad to have you here. Um, what are the things that um, you would say that GM would actually be looking to take away from attending a conference such as Insurance Cinematics USA? Uh, really, uh, learning more about the industry and what its interests are, and, and how we can work more closely together. I think you touched on uh, if there's been a history of, of not enough communication between the auto industry and the insurance industry. I think that's a real opportunity, and so I look to take away more conversations with with participants in the insurance industry and talk about how we can work more closely together. I would just add that um, this is a great forum for us to announce our partnership and the, and the data exchange. Um, we're hoping to have a lot of good conversations with both uh, insurance companies, other OEMs about the solution, and other data providers in the ecosystem. And, and I would add to what Greg said about here to learn. And there's a lot of interesting things going on uh, with UBI, and this is just part of the ecosystem. So the more we can learn, the, the better we'll be. Neil, Greg, thanks very much for joining us, and I uh, hope you have a good couple of days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.